That should be good. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okie dokie. So there's a lot that has to be kind of lined up as you're going together here, folks. Well, we've got to line up. You know, obviously get it on the studs. You've got the front motor mount there. Make sure that's kind of centered. You've got to hit your two side motor mounts on the way up with the studs. You've got to line your steering shaft up. It's a whole lot easier to get that steering shaft instead of trying to figure it, fiddle around with the clasp joint, you know, get it started and then finish putting your um, frame up in and then of course, uh, the ball joints going into the knuckles. So I got them in and then uh, I just put the bolts in there Everything needs to be you know final tightened down at this point But it's really not too bad when you get it about where it needs to be You just start fiddling a little put some bolts in it hold them light But I wanted to tighten that steering shaft before I uh, before I forgot about that That's one bolt you don't want falling out. I'll tell you that. Let's get our torque specs and zippy zap this thing down Don't 
think that's all of them. Uh, let's go around here and have a look. See, not real tight. To be honest with you, these uh, these big old honkers are only 55 foot pounds. So you got the three there. We've got three here. Same thing with the front ones. Pretty good sized bolt for like 55 foot pounds. So those are all in, and then the two here in the upper mounts. Those are one of the mounts. And I think we're good. We've got our steering shaft back in, our paint marks lined back up. Our motor mounts are just started up in there. So that's good. And then our front engine mount is just starting up it. We gotta let it down. Let that down, then we can put our exhaust back on now. This half of that flange doesn't look horrid. Where's our other one? Oh, here. This one down here, however, is disappearing on us. I do have a whole new flange for it. I thought for sure it was just going to crumble into a million pieces, or at least two or three pieces. All right. Well, I might have to call it quits for the day. I've got me a dental appointment. Oh, not yet. We got to do that. We got to torque them ball joints. And ding dong. That's the problem putting bolts and stuff when you don't tighten it down. Let's torque them before. They get forgotten. I think it said they were 37. Yes, there's that one. What a good thing we came over to talk about. This is why we do this. This is why we come and talk about things. My old man would lose his mind if you put a bolt in something and didn't tighten it down and walked away. Woo! His exact words one time, I don't care if that mother building's on fire, you put in a bolt, you tighten it down. I'll kill you. Something like that. <laughs> I vaguely remember that conversation with him. Um, anyhow. All right, that's it. Here's your part number on your cradle. Let's call it a day for today, okay? We have just a couple minutes, so let's, uh, Let's do this. Let's set this little guy down. I'm gonna have to push that over a little. Down here in the front. I'm just holding that front mount over with a pry bar. There it goes. We should probably get the bolt for that. Anybody know where you put it? Got him. It's right here because it's gonna hit a sweet spot. Oh, that happened to be right in the zone right there. She slid right in. I get it, get it. Luna's been pretty excited with the warm weather. In and out, all day. I went ahead and put the nuts on the motor mount. Pretty easy, pretty standard stuff, tighten those up the mount in the front there, not in a bolt. We, when we were letting this down, we put the bolt in, so I put the nut on that, and then just put the uh, air filter tube. So we're gonna go back underneath this thing, and we're gonna tackle the exhaust today, get that part done, get the plastic jiggly bit stuck back on, and then we've gotta move on and do the brakes to get the car pass inspection. In case you don't believe me or we have trust issues, so we put that motor mount bolt in. Of course, that one down there in the front that lives down there and then the other one that was right over here somewhere so you can't find it in viewfinder but trust me it's here uh that one there oh i suppose the other thing we had to do was hook up the uh power steering line which that there just put that fitting back in <clears throat> and i don't think i ever came through and tighten this up did i i did not look at that busted so i've got to finish uh tightening that up i think that's it should have took my dad's advice 
you know, I told you last time. Ironically enough, today would have been my dad's birthday. Here's to you, old man. Leaving bolts loose for you. <laughs> yeah, well, where are you gonna go? So here is what I have for us. It's new spherical pear flange. That needs to go there, but what I'm wondering, that little guy looks pretty stout. Now I don't know if this, I don't even know if I bought the same exact size. I know I got the closest one I could get, but I'm wondering if the, uh, so that's the female half, if the male half of this one, if the gasket's the same, there's no sense in cutting that one off if we don't have to because it's actually pretty stout. I say we take this apart and see what we see. I think they're probably pretty universal to be honest with you. I'm gonna have a little look. Bingy, bingy, bingy. Oh, it feels to the fizz, eh? Uh, uh, this one's just a scooch bigger on the flange there. Rider. That's not going to function. Oh god dang, that's too bad. It's because the hole spacing is different, so it's the, actually the idea of it's good. It's just the hole spacing here is different, because let's say let's line up that hole versus that hole, we only have that much sticking through, so even if we split the difference, it's, you know, you could probably wallow these out and do some things, but uh, we're not gonna we would do we just want to do it right it would take be longer to fiddle around with it so we're just gonna chip a chop chop it off let's get the pipe stuck up there first uh, but to do that we've got to fix these front threads that we torched off so spritz a little panther piano I got us a 10125 thread chaser Get it started on that, we'll grab our little impact. We just want to get any slag or anything off we have on them. There's that one. Oh, oh gosh. Right on the ground. Same thing here. There's that one. Of course, I've got all new nuts from Dorman. There we go. It's classic Dorman slash Rockford. Not really sure. Not really sure what's going on there, but I like using these ones. They're the flange nuts. It's got the self-locking little teeth on them. We'll keep a few of them around. If all is right in the world, they'll spin right on, and they do. Okay, let's grab the pipe and temporarily toss it up there. Oh, let's see. It's got a bunch of loose heat shields on it. Missing most of them. We'll uh, put some bolts in that when we're closer to being done. Let's see. Stick that there. Oops. Oh, hey! Stick that there. Stick that there. I'm going to put three nuts on it. We're going to tighten it up. And then we're going to have to... Uh, up here where you can't see we're going to chop it off we're going to keep the good section on get it lined up the way it needs to be you can almost put that together and pretend you didn't see it to be honest with you there we go let's get the saws off like you see she's it's pretty crusty and falling apart but technically we could put it back together it would probably seal fine but it's kind of one of those things you know pay me now or pay me later isn't that what they say 
That's a pretty common problem on these Subarus. Usually they're a lot worse than that. Now the old pipe stretcher in there. Th this pipe is the same size that's on the car, so we gotta open it up just a little bit. Uh, what I wanna do is I just wanna have it oriented correctly in case in the future he ever, he ever replaces this resonator. It has to buy that, it comes with the flange. You don't wanna just put it, you know, wherever. So we're just gonna get it really, really close. There is some, a little bit of give, if you will. All right, looks like those holes are lined up good. You could probably choose at this point to just clamp this if you wanted to. It's a good enough fit. It might look kind of silly with, you know, a couple clamps and stuff, but if you're just DIYing it, Heck yeah, that's good for my house. I'm gonna put just a little bit of out pressure on it here, just because we don't have the gasket fully seated in there, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna push out on it just a little bit, right there. All right, close your eyes. Put just a little booger there. We'll put a little booger on this side. Close your eyes. And maybe one on the bottom for good luck. Totally missed, because I wasn't even looking at it. You get that kind of? Looks like we did. Yeehaw. So, chop it off. That pipe there is flared out a little bit. Well, We'll cut it off, we have plenty. You got a lot to play with. And that's gonna go, it's gonna go just about to this curb anyways, providing we don't, we don't chop it off. So I'm gonna say we're gonna cut past that flange, okay? I'm gonna get an extension cord for the chop saw there, or whatever it is it's called. It's all at all. The last time I was using it left-handed, that's why the struggle looked so real there. Left-handed, I was too lazy to go get extension cord. You mm, mother! What the is going on here? Well, I know one thing. We're gonna take the gasket off before we freaking destroy it. Whoa! Drop it right on the floor. An amateur hour, folks. There, gosh. Let me, let me move the camera. So there's this one. So that's the, that's the OG. That's the one that was in bad shape, quote unquote, ripping the customer off. Look at this guy. And then there's one we just cut off. If anybody's questioning that, as they often do. And then this one, we're gonna have to give it the spreader roo So I'm gonna spread this one. Then we'll likely put it kinda together. Probably not, but we'll spread it, stick it on there, slide it up like we did, tack it, then fry that baby. Well, we ain't gotta get them perfect right now. 
semi-perfect will do. Okay, there we go. Let's stick that together. Let's move our ground a little bit closer. Okay. Get our flange absolutely perfect. Make sure there, none of the rest of the exhaust is all droopy drawers here. So this goes. Okay, who's ready? Are we recording? Look at that, we are. Okay, close your eyes again. I'm not gonna lie, I look straight at that. Ready? Close your eyes. Okay. Who's happy? That looks nice, doesn't it? Nice enough. Whoops! I'm gonna clean the crud out of the tip of the welder here. And then I'm gonna let that down and perform an uncertified weld. that we'll put the bolts in that put our bolts back up here and then I've got to get a couple of quarter inch bolts that stick in this radically heat shield we'll fix that before well I didn't ask so we'll fix it before it comes back since my exhaust is rattling there's a bolt that goes in this hanger here also let me take it out oops that's going backwards Man, I don't want to slip and burn my patties. I'll tell you that. Nobody wants it. There's that one. Whew, feel the heat up here. Mm. That one scares me too much. So I just used some quarter by three quarter bolts here. Now this will lose your points at the car show if they see the American Threadstone here, so be warned. I don't know if this guy puts the mirror under it when he takes it to the show or not, but it's missing the bottom half of the shield. I am pretty sure these are usually fully covered. I could be wrong. There's that, and then he's got the old classic Post clamp on the front, so should be good now. Subaru dealer finally showed up. Brought us our link. Can get that little guy slid in there. There it is. Job is almost complete. And then we'll tighten these up. I don't remember what these were, 44 foot-pounds or something like that. There. Now we need a light. So we can find the little hole here. There it is. We're close. There it is. We'll get a car key and put it in there. That one's in. That one's in. We've still got to put the plastic jiggly bits in under here. We need to fluid film this up a little bit first so to kind of preserve this frame to get this vehicle to the end of its life. Of course, we've got our exhaust all done. Did a little grinding on it for you. Really get the people going. <laughs> uh, that bolt 
bolts tight. I don't think we've forgotten anything at this point. We've got our other sway bar link in. I think we've done everything, folks. I think this job's pretty well finished. We reattached his heat shield. I think that's it. I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna spritz it with a little fluid film. We're gonna wrap this thing up. I'm gonna give it to my boy Josh to get the alignment done so he can crack that out for me first thing in the morning. And then I'm gonna finish the brakes on it and uh, whatever else this thing needs for inspection. But folks, if you guys have a car, do not put this Z-Bart crap on here. Throts about, this is some pretty bad stuff. It looks like this car's only had one treatment. Treatment, if you will, but boy, it's some bad stuff, man. It rots these things out at twice the rate, especially you start getting on components like your subframe and stuff, man. These things will completely disappear underneath that. Always use fluid film, Crown, New Hampshire oil coating, something, some oil-based product. be honest with you folks the second part of this did not go as planned uh, when it come to recording so I didn't end up getting a whole lot either case I've got to get rolling uh, I've got to get this thing fixed and actually back to the customer got to finish the brakes we've already talked about but as far as the subframe video and fixing the exhaust I think I've delivered on that or at least most of it uh, not really too bad of a job to do on these Subarus to be honest with you uh, it's one of the easier subframes to change now we just did a video on a Prius and that one was pretty easy. The Mazda wasn't too bad, uh, but these are, are pretty easy. They're pretty straightforward. Stuff is right out in the open where you can get to it, which is really nice. And then all the bolts were friendly, which was super nice. And then we preserved her with a little bit of the, the fluid film. Now I do have a broadcast gun for the fluid film. You guys might've noticed that I use that to spray up inside the cavities. It just, you know, kind of fogs. But it, for doing just the subframe, it works pretty well. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do a whole car with that. It's just, you know, usually for getting up in the cavities and hosing it down. But this subframe will surely outlast this car at this point, unless the guy moves south. <laughs> um, I don't really know much more to say. I probably won't bring you along on the brake job at this point. Um, I've got some work stacking up out there. We've had quite a few cars towed in. And then I've got stuff left over that we've been waiting on parts for that everything's kind of showed up at once. So it's a real shit show around here, if you know what I mean. That's it. I'll see you guys in that comment section. Let me know what you think down there. Questions, comments, Insta, Facebook. You know where to find us, folks. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.